Hey guys, Pastor Tanner here. Logos Bible software is incredibly powerful, but it is also incredibly intimidating. When you first get it, you've got all of these amazing resources, but you might be unsure where to begin. How can you utilize all of these things for your greatest advantage? In Logos 9, we have a new feature that makes all of this much easier called workflows. In this short video, I want to introduce you to the concept of workflows and point you to some of my favorite workflows so you can utilize them to study the Bible better. Furthermore, there are workflows here for every single type of person out there. Whether you're just trying to study the Bible on yourself as an interested layman, or you're a pastor trying to do weekly sermon prep, there's something here for everyone. There is even a workflow for how to do good devotionals, and I want to point you to that direction as well. So without further ado, let's jump into the idea of workflows, and let me show you some of my favorites. So here I have my Logos Bible software open and workflows are easily accessible if you just click this guides button. You scroll down and you can see this section right here entitled workflows. Now which workflows are available to you might be dependent upon the base package that you have. So you need to be careful that you're not looking for a workflow here if you don't have the base package to support it. But this is where they're at and let's just utilize the first workflow that I want to introduce you guys to. This is the inductive Bible study. This workflow is good for somebody who's just an interested layman trying to understand the Bible better for themselves. And what I love about workflows is they give you a step-by-step -step process that you can interactively work through in order to study the Bible for yourself. This week I'm preaching out of Hebrews chapter 1, so let's go ahead and start here and just put Hebrews chapter 1 verses 5 to 14 here in the box. I click it and you can see it immediately brings up my inductive Bible study workflow on Hebrews 1, 5 to 14. There's a lot of information here available to you. It tells you to read the passage several times in your preferred Bible, and it lists that passage in your preferred Bible. You can also click this more button to understand the desired outcomes of the study, get a better explanation, and even introduce you to further reading surrounding the idea of inductive Bible study. These things are absolutely helpful because you no longer have to think really hard about where should I go next? What should I look into next? Sometimes you don't have that understanding of which resources you should consult in which order. The workflow does all that work for you and all you have to do is read what it tells you to do, consult those resources, and you even have a box to put your observations in. If you finished the section, you can go ahead and click the continue button. And if you weren't going to work on that section for now, just click skip. This functions like a checklist, and if you've clicked skip, it won't check the box, but if you do click continue, it will check the box and say that you've done it. You can work through each of these categories at your own pace, letting your own interest and curiosity carry the day. You can see all of the different media, you might want to spend a lot of time looking at these, or you might want to skip this section. You might want to look in detail into this section, click continue, and continue to work through in an inductive way. What I like about this process is after 10, 15, 20 times, you're now going to have downloaded in your own brain how to conduct an inductive Bible study for yourself. Not only did you get great insights from God's word, you now have a skill that you have developed so that you can study more closely in the future. Let's go ahead and move on now from inductive Bible study to the Lectio Divina. This is my preferred workflow for digging into God's word in a devotional way, engaging him with your emotions and your affections. Let's take a look. So again, to access this workflow, you're just going to click on guides, scroll down, and click on Lectio Divina. Enter your Bible reference in. We can use the same one that we used in our previous workflow. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 5 to 14, and hit enter. Notice how the Lectio Divina works. There's a reason that I prefer this workflow, and it's because it causes you to engage in God's Word with reflection, meditation, and your imagination. I think Protestants for a long time have not engaged in God's Word in these ways. I know my default when I open the Bible is to try to get in-depth and study as much as I can. There's plenty of time for that, there's room for that, and it's powerful and important. But there's also time to engage with God's Word with your imagination and emotions. And I think the Lectio Divina workflow does just that. If you look, first step is to prepare in quietness. And it says to get away, to pray, to prepare your heart. If you click the More button, you can see the desired outcomes and explanation. 
One of the sections that I really like is this section down here. Meditate on the passage. Reflect in quietness on the passage you have just read for several minutes. And further down, listen to this. Engage the passage with your imagination. For some passages, you might imagine the scene. What would you have seen or heard or felt? I think this is a wonderfully devotional way to engage with God's word. And especially those of us who are in a more Protestant, left hemisphere centered tradition, we can utilize this workflow to engage in God's word in a more affectational way. I think that's very powerful. So notice that these workflows can help you no matter what level you're at. If you are just an interested layman trying to dig in depth, you have a workflow available to you. And if you are interested in beefing up your devotional life and engaging with God in the power of the Holy Spirit in a more affectational, emotional way, here's a workflow for you. Now, I want to introduce you to two more workflows for those who are interested in sermon preparation. If you're interested in digging into God's word in order to prepare sermons or lessons, go ahead and check out these two workflows. Now, the first workflow that I want to show you for sermon preparation or preparing lessons and studies is actually one that is specifically devoted to this idea. And this is the expository sermon preparation workflow. Now, this is a big workflow with a lot of concepts associated with it. And you're going to see it's going to take you a long time to go through this workflow. Notice that you begin with prayer, you reflect on your passage, you read it several times, but then you study it in depth. And as you click through this workflow, it's going to give you each of the resources that you need to consult in order to get that more in-depth study. You're going to be looking at the literary typing. You're going to be digging into your commentaries. You're going to be looking at the historical context. You're going to be doing exegesis. That's why I love this workflow so much. It sets out the process for you ahead of time, and you can just focus on God's word. The process gets out of your way so you can actually dive in-depth into God's word and just get as many insights out of it as you can. When I first took the pastorate and I started preparing sermons regularly, I did my best to put together a thoroughgoing sermon preparation process. I didn't want to skip any steps. I wanted to make sure I did all of the right word studies, that I focused on the exegesis, that I consulted the commentaries, and I did so at the right time. With this workflow, you are set up for success and you can just walk through it. Of course, over time, you can adapt it as you see fit. I'll show you a little bit later how to do that. But for now, you can utilize this workflow time and time again to go ahead and get those great exegetical insights that you're looking for and prepare great sermons and messages. Now, I said there's one other workflow you might be interested in if you're comparing the Bible in its original languages and you want to prepare those in-depth sermons or lessons. And this is the word study workflow. Okay, this workflow allows you to work through the original languages in more depth, and I really like it for that purpose. There's one extra step you have to do here because it says to enter your lemma to get started. I don't know about you, but trying to type Greek or Hebrew on my keyboard is difficult. It can be done, but there's a much easier way to go about this. Go ahead and open up one of your Bible versions on a similar pane. I'll just grab the ESV right here. And recently, I was studying this idea of the commander of the Lord's army in Joshua 5.15. So maybe I want to know what this commander word refers to. Here it is in Hebrew. I highlighted it with my sympathetic highlighting. It is sar in Hebrew. All you have to do is right-click it. Make sure you have lemma highlighted. That's this circular diagram. And then just scroll over here to copy reference and click the text button. This has now copied the lemma for SAR into my clipboard. And if I just click lemma here, control V, I pasted SAR there in Hebrew without ever having to type anything. I can click down here, SAR, representative of the king, official. So I click that and now my workflow is kicked off. And here is your opportunity to dig in depth at your own pace. You've chosen your lemma. You can look at all of the different words and translations. Here are individual boxes for you to note your observations and get that in-depth study done. So again, this is another workflow combined with the expository sermon preparation workflow that you can utilize to dig deep into all of those individual words that you want to do studies on. Once you combine these two workflows, you are being enabled with your library. The process gets out of the way and you can just get straight to the insights. That's why I think workflows are so powerful. Before we go, I just want to show you two quick things about workflows. And this is how you can add new workflows into your Logos library. Perhaps you didn't get a large enough base package to have a lot of the workflows you're interested in. 
No worries. There are other workflows that are available to you. If you click guides right here, you can scroll down and it says get more shared guides and then workflows. Click this workflows button. What this is taking you to is a section that is public information of people who have shared their own personal workflows online. You can see the list right here. There are a lot of different documents here. We're looking for workflow template. You can see here is a sermon preparation workflow template. It's not Logos' official one, but this one is put together by Brandon Higgleman, and it has 2,200 users. This one's probably going to be pretty good. If you click on it, you can just click Add to your Docs right here. Furthermore, if you scroll down, you can see that there's another workflow that's been put together here. This one by Mark Barnes. He's very well known on the Logos forums. Christ-Centered Sermon Preparation. Go ahead and click that and click Add to Docs. Now you may ask yourself, how do I access these workflows to open them? Click guides and you're not going to click workflows. Instead, you're going to click custom workflows. This is where all of your downloaded and added workflows go. Here you can see our sermon preparation workflow from Brandon Higgleman. And here you can see Mark Barnes's Christ-centered sermon preparation. You can enter your Bible reference here. And now you have a workflow that you can work through that was prepared by another Logos user. And this is their method to going ahead and preparing a sermon. That's fantastic. One final thing I want to show you guys. You can also create your own workflows just like these other Logos users have. If you click guide right here, you can click new and make a new workflow. This will bring up a workflow template for you, and you can click whatever type of workflow you're making. If you're doing one for sermon prep, for example, you can click Bible reference, and it is going to walk you through developing your own step-by-step -step process for creating your workflow. You can add all of your intentions and your motivations and put those steps in place so that time and time again, you can work through that workflow with each individual verse. Also, if there's a workflow that you like, you can go ahead and duplicate it, mimic it here, and add in your own steps or take away steps that don't interest you. There's infinite customization at this point, and you can make the workflows work right for you so you can get the most value from your Logos Bible software. Okay, guys, I hope that video on workflows was helpful for you. I truly think there is something here for every type of Logos user when it comes to workflows. If you just want to study the Bible more in depth yourself, if you're preparing sermons, or even want to do devotional time. I love the workflows, and I wanted to introduce you to this feature because it makes the process easier, and it makes your library more accessible than ever before. I appreciate you guys watching our videos. If you would take the time to like and subscribe, that really helps the channel. Also, please put down in the comments if there are any functions or features in Logos you want me to point out or do an in-depth study on. And if there are any resources you're interested in, please let me know. Also, if you're interested in a specific topic or idea that you would like me to dig into and I can make a video about that, please also put that down in the comments below. We want this channel to be a place where you can come get information not only on Logos Bible Software, but also information that's going to help you in your studies as a Christian, in your ministry as a teacher, preacher, or just a good student of the Word. Appreciate you taking so much time to watch our videos. Take care. God bless. Bye now.